Well, welcome, friends, to this edition of this wonderful edition of Spotlight on Music. I am so excited tonight. We got some very special men of Detroit, uh, some up and coming. I mean, they're legends already. Our Detroit gospel music family. We praise God uh, for these great men of uh, Brother Larry Whitfield and Brother David Whitfield and Whitfield Productions, who you've heard in the background. Uh, we're gonna be talking to these gentlemen in just a moment. Listen, friends, what I'd like for you to do, those of you joining us, jump in the comment section and like and share. Uh, start your own watch parties and share with us tonight as we will be talking uh, music talk tonight with Brother David Whitfield and Larry Whitfield. It's always a joy to come your way as we share the very best in the gospel. Thank God for our Detroit music family and our national music family, the Gospel Music Workshop of America, Fellowship of Music and Arts, all of our affiliates, everybody that uh, shares with us. Listen, I want you uh, to jump in the comment section and start uh, letting us know you're there as we go through this conversation tonight and send in your comments, questions if you have any. And most important of all, we want you to like and share, like and share, like and share. I'm gonna write a song called Like and Share in the key of B flat, so y'all can <laughs> jump in there and be on top of it. So listen, we're, we're prepared now. I want you to help me welcome all of our family, musical family, Help me welcome tonight to our platform of the one and only Larry Whitfield and uh, Brother David Whitfield. Blessings to you all tonight, and thank you for taking the time to be with me tonight. Yes, sir. Bless you. Bless you. God bless you. Man. So honored to be, so honored to be with Bishop Andre Woods. You have known both of us all of our lives. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah. Isn't, isn't that something, man? Yeah. Generations of just, just fellowship and love. And of course, man, to have you all on together and to just, just give us 
some history of the legacy and your ministry and all that that you've been blessed to do. It's my honor and my privilege uh, to have you all to take time to do this. Listen, man, I, I just feel like a kid in the candy store. Uh, <laughs> oh, just my goodness. To have this privilege for you all to share some information on yourselves and your family legacy, your musical family. And, uh, and also what's important to me uh, from whence you come and what you're doing now yes, to sir. continue. And as the Lord has given you your own individual music ministry, it's, it's a blessing to have you. So I'm, I'm going to start with you, Larry. I'm going to start with you and let you just give us, uh, you know, walk us through uh, how you started in music and, uh, and where God has you now. Wow. Um, first of all, again, I want to say thank you for, uh, inviting uh us to come on and be with you um i said it jokingly but it is serious you have literally known us uh all of our lives um and the relationship that you have with uh the late maestro thomas whitfield i mean it's just so many years i mean not just not just music but just friendship um and it's totality i mean um going back to neapolitan tommy used to take me everywhere um that he went people thought that i was his son um that's just how much he used to take me and i remember uh coming in a many a nights a many a sunday nights at 12 one o'clock in the morning and my mother fussing at him because i had school monday but i didn't that didn't bother me. I was with Tommy and I was with him. So, you know, just those memories alone. But uh, back to your question in reference to uh, my musical beginnings, my musical beginnings really started being with them and uh, being a part of a church, uh, our faith, prayer tabernacle um, yeah. <laughs> on 104 Elliott. Um, the church go back to 114 Erskine, as you would remember, Bishop. But um, I started uh, at 104 Elliott, uh, being a part of the choir myself and Volley Craig, well, Charles Ashley Craig IV, and uh, Pastor Lindsey Craig Jr., uh, just being raised with them um, in the music ministry and being around the Craig brothers and just experiencing, uh, the Frank whites that came through that church, the Herbert Picards and, um, um, yourself and, uh, the Ronnie Kersey's and, uh, pastor Gregory Troy and, and, and many others. That was just a musical, uh, utopia if I can use that word. And then when I got older, I was finally a part of the choir. Um, so I was singing the first song that was given to me, uh, Sandy Rose, as a matter of fact, Sandy Rose was um, a part of Prayer Tabernacle and uh, she was a part of the youth department. And one of the first songs that was given to me was Jesus Will Work It Out. And back then I had a real, real high, high voice. You know, that problem that I had, you know, I, I was singing in that key back then. And I was, I gave it over the tablets. You know, <laughs> I used to kill that part. Bishop Woods, I used to kill, I gave it over the tablets. My, my, my. <laughs> Man, memories. That was the first song. So just being raised, <laughs> I know my nephew was like, oh my goodness. Just being raised with Prayer Tabernacle and the legacy of the Craig brothers and uh, Reverend David Kenneth Craig, who was the pastor at the time, and just going out with them and singing and then being around uh, Tommy, being with him in the studio, uh, mixing choir albums and stuff. I remember the engineers, the Mike Acapelli, the Rufus Harris, uh, the Warren Woods, the Bernie Mendelson, um, all of those guys at United Sounds, 
Yeah. Uh, uh, pack three, uh, 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 pack, uh, what is it? Pack three? Yeah, pack three. Yeah, pack three studio. And, and just being in the studio all night, I, re I remember waking up on the floor and hearing birds chirp and Tommy was still at the board mixing. I mean, those 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 times are, are are few in between now. You know, now people do block time. Okay, we in here from seven to eleven, but back then you you were in the studio until it was right. When choirs went in the studio to do a recording, they was in there until it was done right. It wasn't a certain time where nobody looking at their watches. A matter of fact. There were times when you were in the studio, there was a break, we ate some chicken, and then we went uh -huh. back behind those mics. <laughs> and we was in there. And Patient Woods, you know I'm telling the truth. Uh, I know and, you're telling the truth. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I know my nephew was exposed to that. I can remember the concerts at Ford Auditorium. Uh, Our Faith Prayer Tabernacle, Joyful Sound, the concerts yeah. we had to have. And then later on in the year was Oh Give Thanks with St. James. It's so much history. It, it is so much history that we can really go over an hour when you talk about good, rich history. So moving from there, then was the Thomas Whitfield Company. Tommy moving, to his, moving into his own and singing with the company. I was actually a drummer for the Thomas Whitfield Company. It was many songs I played on that people don't know uh, that I I uh, did. Like one of the songs, Brand New, uh, the very first album, Brand New, I played on the song that Ernest Herskin sung, which was Is Your All on the Altar. That was me on those drums, David. <laughs> what? <laughs> we, yes. we didn't know that. Yes. No. Yes. I mean, yes. I did. Well, I yes. take that back. I, I, Tommy, I knew. I, I take that back. I played yeah. on "Is Your All on the Altar," and I also played on the. Uh, he had a he had an instrumental called "Reflect." Yeah. That he put on the first, the first album, and I believe the second album. Um, he would always. That was like a signature. And uh, I also played there. I and mean, then I also did some concerts. So, yeah, I started off playing drums and then I went into singing. My exposure to singing really came uh, with Michael Meningal um, and communion. Michael seen me open up a victory service that the Whitfield Company had at Lighthouse Cathedral. Uh, Wanderlyn Stokes was the original person that was supposed to do praise and worship and then MC the program and and her flight came in late and Tommy called me in the back he said listen I need you to do praise and worship and I looked at him like he was crazy like me he said yes I need you to do praise and worship to open up this program Wanderlyn Stokes flight is late we got to get started we can't have these people sitting around uh, so when I did that Michael Mendingall, light-skinned guy named Michael Mendingall, pulled me in the back. He said, he said, man, he said, he said, man, listen, I'm about to start this choir. And I would love if you would be one of my vice presidents of the choir. Lo and behold, that's where Michael Mendingall's communion was formed. And that's where I got my exposure as not just Tommy's brother. I was known as Tommy's brother. That's Tommy's baby brother. Michael Mendingall and Communion, when I started singing with them and being put out there as the soloist, then I was Larry Whitfield, Thomas Whitfield's brother. So I credit Michael Mendingall and Communion for giving me that exposure as a solo artist, as Larry Whitfield the solo artist, and that's where it uh, begins. So from Prayer Tabernacle to the Thomas Whitfield Company and just being around all of that and getting all of that good meat, all of that good meat, and then being connected to Michael Mendingall, lo and behold, that's where Larry Whitfield was formed. And then we go 
to where we are now. Oh man, that's that's awesome. Yes, that sir. That is awesome, awesome, awesome. Come on, David, tell us from whence you come. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, I want to say I'm very honored to be a part of this uh, podcast tonight. Um, well, it started for me on Grand River and McGraw, which was Prayer Tabernacle. Uh, Pastor uh, Reverend David K. Cray, as my uncle forestated, and um, I was an altar boy, and uh, Bishop Lindsey Craig. Uh, my auntie had a song, Sister Christine Lumpkin had a song on the company's album called Revive Us Again. Yes. And uh, my auntie did a concert at Prayer Tabernacle and she wanted me to direct the song. Well, I was so short, they had to stand me on like this little box at Prayer Tabernacle and I directed the Voices of Tabernacle revive us again. I remember like it was yesterday, I had on like a, a burgundy Pierre Cardin soup. <laughs> <laughs> Not many kids can say they directed the voices of Tabernacle. And uh, that's where that started. Then it started rolling. I did my very first concert uh, in 1992 called God's Power Over Drugs. Uh, it was something pulling at me to do something to kind of save people out of drugs. And uh, God really moved in that area. Then from there, um, I was a member of Wings of Love where I am the minister of music right now. Uh, been there since 1982. Been at Wings of Love since 1982. And um, had began the youth choir, which was uh, now the youth chorale. And uh, we won the Thorn Apple Valley contest. And uh, my ministry just started taking off. Then from there, I started singing uh, with Chris Jones and Word of Praise. And I began to be the head director of Word of Praise. And I was with him for 10 years. And um, God placed in my heart uh, to start a community choir. And I started with Field Production. It started off as a family and friends choir. And uh, we just started getting engagements and engagements. I said, hey, y'all, um, y'all want to make this uh you know, a community choir. And he's like, yeah. So one 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 night, rehearsed on Mondays. I started off with 11 people. The next night, the next Monday, it tripled. The next one, it quadrupled. And for that, we're still standing 21 years later. We're still standing 21 years later. And I just thank God for what he's doing uh, in my music ministry uh, with my own uh, ministry and with my church ministry. And uh, I just thank God, Bishop Woods, for everything that he has done and everything that he's going to do. And that's that's awesome. I Larry was touching on some stuff. Both of you kind of hit hit some 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 precious memory moments, man. When we start talking about uh, those days. And uh, you said not very many. I don't know nobody, ain't talking about very many, who was a kid that directed the Voices of Tabernacle. Right, right. I think you got that cornered all by yourself. Yes. I oh, think hallelujah. Yeah, I, I think yeah. I think when, when the history books are open, then they've got to show David Whitfield. They got to tell Absolutely. your age because I don't know, and I was around, so I don't know no other a uh, uh, young person, child, or you mm -mm. that stood before that choir. No. Because you weren't going to stand up before that choir. Oh, no, no. Now, oh, no. actually, I, it was only maybe two or three people that I remember. One was Bishop James Lindsey Craig. The other one yeah. was Beverly Walker. 
Beverly yeah. Wall. Uh-huh. And if it was anybody else, they were a guest, like Pastor Quincy Fielding or some or someone like that. Uh yeah, Quincy yeah. Fielding Jr., but not a young person that I can remember. So yeah. you are definitely in those books, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And 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 there you start calling out the musical role. I mean, when my grandfather first brought me to Fred Tabernacle on a Sunday night, I mean, I was just hooked, just an utter amazement uh, to watch organ prelude by Alfred Bolden and yes. Herbert them to come in and then that quiet line that wall mm -hmm. and uh, CA would get up there, man. And I thought I had gone to heaven. The yeah. first time I heard the arrangement of Blessed Assurance mm. that the Voices of Tabernacle in the in the tune of Beautiful Dreamer. Mm. I had never heard nothing like that in my life. Mm. Well, quiet to just go back to back, back to back, back to back. They kept you on the edge of your seat, man. Mm. And the musicianship, and, and he could pull out anybody from any section, from Louise McCoy, the eulogy. I mean, Absolutely. they had so many talented singers, Richard Rockmore, I mean, yes. kept, they yes. just kept pulling them out. Yes. I'm like, well, is there anybody in this choir that don't lead? Yes. It's a bunch of just everybody. And I remember the days, man, and see, I tell people all the time to correct my history because they they keep talking about St. James. I said, no, the, my, my debut for recording was with the Voices of Tabernacle. Mm -hmm. It won't be wow. long when mm -hmm. Jesus come right mm -hmm. there at United Sounds mm -hmm. on the God has smiled on me album and going yes. to Fort Auditorium with them while Reverend Cleveland was around. And I remember Keith Pringle, Dale Hardy, let's yes. yes. all yes. of those, all of those giants. But man, let's, let's go back because uh, uh, when I met Tommy, man, it was, it was such a blessing when, uh, when the Craig brothers, uh, said you got to meet our musician mm -hmm. and they invited me to one of their rehearsals you know of course Ronnie Kersey was around and all of those guys James Marsh they used to all come by Neapolitan man when my grandfather found out Tommy was at Neapolitan you know you know what he did you got the uh, <laughs> Minister Whitfield is in the building he got to come to the org. Yeah, I mean, my grandfather yeah. He, when you came there he put everybody to work yeah. You know, it was the choirs that would come, you know, and uh, oh man, we forged a, a friendship that I cherish, man. I'm telling you, uh, Tom was just, just, just a real uh, musician's musician, songwriter to songwriters. I mean, there was nobody like him then, and there would never be another Thomas Woodfield. And I mm -hmm. cherish those days and memories because. Yeah. He afforded us the opportunity uh, to, to share with him. And he wasn't, he wasn't insecure. He showed right. us stuff. When I could call Tommy any time of day and ask him, man, what's that chord you play? Mm -hmm. He'd say, okay, we'll get to the piano and uh, let's, let's, I'm going to walk you through it. Yeah. And yeah. then uh, he was one of those that not can only tell you what he wanted, but could show you. Absolutely. And I always thought that was magical. Absolutely. But I remember, uh, 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 David, your father, uh, when, when Tommy wanted to do something extra outside the church, and he called me, and uh, we were at Bill, Bill Lyons' house, mm. and he wanted to start this group, and he Over had on Karen. Boston. And, yeah, on Boston, Doc. Yes. I won't, I won't even start talking about them. That was the house. They, that was yes, the house. sir. <laughs> Boston in 12, I'm telling you. Every yes. weekend, yes. every Friday, every Saturday. Mm -hmm. And uh, he started talking about this group he wanted to have, and he had Karen, Phyllis, and David, and, and Bill. Mm -hmm. he called it Juan Joa. Juan Joa. Juan yes, Joa. sir. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we, mm -hmm. would, we would go sing around the different affairs, uh, weddings, and bar mitzvahs, and mm -hmm. I dang uh, the pick Kickapoo Lounge that we Mm -hmm. We did all the top 40. We, I think you did you Latin know. quarters too, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, man. We, we, and they all we did the Latin, 
and, and yeah, and, right there and, on the boulevard. Yeah, and 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 also too. Oh, let me add uh, uh, Sandy Rose to that yeah. list of directors. Uh, yeah, over at Prayer Tabernacle. I'm I'm sorry. I wanted to add that, but um, you all did Wanjoa. There was a store called mm -hmm. Federals. Yep. Juan Joa did a jingle right. for Federals. Federals Department Store. Yes. 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 It was <laughs> it was a lot going on. I don't know how uh, uh, we got all of those engagements back to back. And then uh, during that time, that's when I went over to St. James and then Tommy had said, man, I think I want to move to a choir. And um, and uh, I said, oh, man, they got me tied up so over here. So uh, he had told me he had talked to uh, Tyrone Hep Hill and, mm -hmm. and gathered a few people. And, and then the Whitfield Company was born. Yes. I'll never forget it. And uh, what a joy. Yes. Just history made from that point on. Yep. What a joy. And I remember when Tom was talking about, you know, man, I think I want to get married. I think... You know, and uh, he was telling me about Gwen. And uh, yeah. I tell people, all, I said, Tommy, what you can't do is tell nobody what your decision is because, you know, uh, people get upset because everybody was Tommy's friend. Right. But man, when he called me and said, listen, I want you to be the best man, I like, I just went to crying. I said, why not me? Not me. He said, well, I ain't going to have no trouble out of you because the rest of them, you know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but man, girl. we used to holidays, Christmas, mm -hmm. Thanksgiving, and yeah, mm -hmm. I'm not gonna talk about our sweetheart, how she talked about us that day we went over to Phyllis' house on Philadelphia and put them kids' toys together. <laughs> <laughs> and they fell apart. Me and Tom, I said, Yeah, that's a memory I'll never forget. I heard but listen, David, story. tell yeah. us. You know, uh, your father was was so gifted and anointed. Mm -hmm. I mean, just a singer. And uh, um, so you got an honest, man. I mean, you just a chip off the old block, as they say. Yeah. And and uh, what was it like coming behind uh, <laughs> his legacy and uh, and uh, people looking at you? And uh, you know how they do. They say, oh, you got some 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 big shoes to fill. Mm -hmm. But but yeah. man, I thank God because you have uh, not only held up the family legacy and name, but you have come into your own. Yes. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, we know you as David Whitfield, Whitfield Productions. Man, we love that. I love that. So what was it like when you first started out, the butterflies in your stomach taking on so much so young? Ah, oh, Bishop, it was... It would, I would get nervous. I, I still get nervous to this day. And um, I had butterflies and everything. And just um, following and watching my dad, how he used to command uh, singers. And my dad, he when he spoke, he meant what he said. That's right. And he said what he meant. Mm. And you didn't have to second guess it. He was very direct. And uh, I love that about him, and especially in ministry and in business. Mm -hmm. um, my dad was phenomenal in business and in ministry. And it was just such an honor just to watch him do yeah. ministry as a little boy and growing up as a teenager uh, when he was at Christian Love and when he was at Abundant Life and just mm -hmm. watching him. And... Um, I was like, wow. And the things that he would say to the choir members and they would just love on them. <laughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Say, like, yeah. wow. I said, such a gift. And uh, so I believe that same type of anointing mm -hmm. flowed on down to me. Yeah. Because I have a way of getting what I need from the choir members that I'm over. Uh, and sometimes I know I'm, I, I make a man, uh, but at the end of the well, day, they'd be glad mm -hmm. that uh, they'll look at the, you know, the end result of it. They're like, you know what? Sometimes I can't 
Stan, you little short nigga. But uh, <laughs> yes, sir. but it was all, right. all worth it. I love you. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you know, to God be the glory. To God be the glory. You know what though, Bishop? I want to add to that uh, in in reference to uh, my brother, his dad. Um, he was definitely a business person. Um, uh, a lot of people don't know that he was Tommy's business advisor. Tommy dealt with the business, but not to the degree that David dealt with it. So David was really a voice uh, in Tommy's ear uh, in reference to business concerning the Thomas Whitfield company in the earlier days. Okay. Uh, David conducted a lot of the advising to Tommy in reference to what he should do, which gave him room to focus on music production, choral arrangements, and, and so on. A lot of people don't know that David was that business uh, voice in his ear um, back then. Even when him and I started my first group, which was called the Whitfield Music Group, the way we set that up, David did the business. He said, all I want you to do is focus on writing, getting the, the group together, hitting the voices right and everything, and let me handle the business. So his business mind was amazing because one thing he made me to realize in working uh, in the industry, and I'm going to say it like this, uh, it's a cutthroat industry. Now, not you can just say it. secular. You can say it. Okay, not just on the secular side, but on the gospel yes, side. Yes, uh, it's a cutthroat industry, and if you don't have uh, the wisdom and the wherewithal, you know, you will mess around and get <laughs> your throat cut. And when I say your throat cut, I'm talking about your business. I'm talking about a song stolen from you or take yeah. it from you because it's a cutthroat industry. So you got to know, um, you have to know the industry. I mean, everything can't be spiritual and hallelujah. If you don't know that business, you're going to get cut up. And yeah. David was yes. very aggressive. He was very aggressive. He was loving, but he was very aggressive when it came to business. You, We're friends over here, but when it comes to business over here, this is how it is. So. Yeah, uh, he was he was definitely a strong business minded person, and it taught me a lot, uh, even even now, you know. So, mm -hmm. yeah, 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 man. And I I remember those days because uh, when I started out, a lot of discussions we had with with Tom. I mean, and and David would even tell would tell me some things while he was talking to Tommy. I was in some of those meetings, you know, uh, when we would sit around the table, when it come to your publishing, your writer's agreements and all of that. When I, when I was faced with my very first recording contract, first person I called was Thomas Whitfield, mm -hmm. you know, cause on my chosen album, he did the liner notes and he incurred, but, but I'm telling you, David, you're right, man. He, he was a stickler that every I be dotted and every T right. crossed and that right. we totally understood uh, what we giving away and what we getting in return or, you know, how this agreement going to work <clears throat> in our favor long term. And, and, and I've been an advocate of that. That's what we try to do sometime. Uh, matter of fact, I'm going to have uh, the president of the Detroit Federation of Musicians on real soon. But, but our, our, our musicians, songwriters, and singers, they need to know the business. Yes. Because it is a business side, and it's cutthroat because uh, somebody tried to burn me, you know, wow. starting out, you know, takes, taking songs that I'm dealing with something now with uh, an old song by an artist. I can't talk about it, but. Right. Uh, <laughs> right. I had to go after them, man, because. They didn't give me credit for nothing. I'm like, wait a minute, you know. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not public domain. First of all, I'm not dead. Right. I'm still here. Right. You know. But I'm thank God for like the that right now, and sir. all of our all yeah. our musicians. I'm there with you. 
Yeah, yeah, you know. So I, I hope the musicians and songwriters and artists are listening uh, uh, to, to what Brother Larry is saying. You know, you got to know this business. And if you're going to be out there, because if you don't, they will take you to the cleaners. Mm -hmm. And you'll be over there somewhere shouting. Mm -hmm. And while you shouting, they're going to the bank. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. so, 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 David, uh, yes. uh, uh, how many projects? You've got several projects out. Uh, 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 tell us about all of your projects and then the, then the latest project you released. Well, my very first uh, project uh, was my freshman uh, project called It's Going to Be All Right. And that was produced by Rex Houston. And um, that was my very first project. Then my second uh, project was uh, dropped a couple of singles, uh, which was Calvary's Cross which yeah. was written and wrote by v. Pastor Rudolph and Phil. V. Yes, sir. V. The one and Pastor, only. The one and only Pastor Rudolph yes. Stanfield called Calvary's Cross. And that was my uh, first single. And then uh, this last project, uh, which is my sophomore project, which is uh, Sunday Night Live. Yes, and yeah. If you haven't gotten it, Chet, you need to get it, my friend, my brother, my sister, you need to get it. It's good old-fashioned <laughs> church. I mean, symbols and uh, washboards, tambourines. Uh, we I have got. a song that, uh, that's called Keys to the Kingdom. Some of y'all remember that from way back in the day. Uh, so yeah. we did it and uh it's good and churchy and so um that is the title of our um sophomore project sunday night live and we're actually getting ready for sunday night live november the 21st shameless plug though yeah all right yeah plug it man tell them yes mark that on your calendar mark november it now because we gonna have some church yes sir and I believe the people are ready. Man. Yes. Yeah. I believe the people are ready. You know. Yeah. Well, well let, let me ask you, uh, Larry. The, yes, sir. You, you, you've been everywhere. I mean, from, from guest appearance uh, continually with the uh, Whitfield Company and then um, doing your own mm -hmm. uh, ministry uh, and working with churches and pastors. Uh, wh what are you currently doing uh, right now? Well, currently right now, I, I well, I'm sitting in my uh, studio. This is called the Maestro Room. Uh, um, I wish I could pan my camera around everything, but uh, I'm doing a lot of uh, production. I'm doing a lot of studio engineering. Um, I've really gotten deep into studio engineering i've had some um some hitters in here just as a recent uh pastor walter allen steen was here last night doing some vocals for some things that he's working on with uh pastor raymond davis and then about a month ago uh i had lowell pie in the studio working on some vocals as well so i've been doing a lot of vocal recording with uh other artists and stuff uh i'm connected to musician uh, extraordinaire Philip Johnson. Him and I have a production team uh, called One Source Music. And uh, we're lifting up new artists that want an opportunity to record. So we're trying to put them out there and give them some exposure and also give exposure to the production that uh, we put together as a team. Um, I'm, I'm about to do, uh, something with, uh, James Brown, uh, JB factory. I'm in the works with, uh, putting, um, doing something with him or him doing something with me, um, in the process of that. Uh, I also have a radio show, uh, every Sunday at 5 PM, uh, it's called Sunday throwbacks It's on the vent radio network. Um, I'm on and uh, it's pretty much a format to whereas I'm able to 
showcase people like my nephew and other artists that are out there. Also people with businesses uh, that just needs a platform to be um, heard. So it's kind of a servitude type show with in between I'm playing um, gospel throwback music, you know, like Bishop Andre Woods or, you know, uh, the company or David Whitfield and Whitfield Productions or Larry Callahan or Twyman. And even when they come out with something new, I'm able to put it on. I mean, a lot of times in radio, you know, you have to go through hoops. You got to jump this way. And when you jump that way, you got to have some money in your hand and all that type of stuff. And I just thank God that he's given me a platform that if somebody said, hey, man, I got this single, you know, can you play? Yes. And can you come on and talk about it? So it's just giving people a platform to talk about what the Lord has given them, whether it's music or it's uh, a product or a business. You know, this COVID thing, um, and we look at it from a negative side a lot, and we realize that we've lost loved ones um, um, and things through this COVID. However, this COVID piece on the other side have given people business opportunities. I mean, there are people that have businesses that had this COVID thing not hit that they wouldn't have it because the business that was in the public had to shut down because COVID shut everybody down. So now we have a lot of businesses that are being ran out of, out of people's homes that has grown, that has grown to the point to where I know some people right now today, Bishop, that has, that has had to leave their job because the business that was given to them at the time that this COVID hit has picked up so big that now they don't have to work at a nine to five. So just thanking God for that platform that I'm able to serve uh, the people of God in that capacity by way of radio. And uh, it's, it is growing and I thank, I thank God for it. Yeah, yeah, man, a lot of, lot of stuff. As a, as, a, as a product, I would say of COVID, we all here tonight with Spotlight. Right, right, Because oh, right. I was sitting at home, I said, Lord, I got to do something, mm -hmm. something, you know, man. So I, I do, I got open mic on Thursdays. I got this on Fridays. Uh, Spotlight on ministry with our little fellowship of pastors, interdenominational assembly churches. And you got Saturday, on Saturday then, too, right? Yeah. Yeah, five o'clock on Saturday. And then Sunday, this is my story, what I've shared with people. And um, it's a joy, man. I'm, I'm enjoying myself yeah. and uh, looking forward to, to go into other things and, as well as doing writing. But uh, what's exciting to me when I look at both of you, and uh, thank God I was around, so I, I got an inside view, a scoop on from whence you come and how you all have developed mm -hmm. and maintained music <laughs> preservation, continuity, consistency, mm -hmm. and excellence in, in uh, your musical arrangements, your vocal teaching, and your artistry, man. It's, it's, it's phenomenal to mm -hmm. see. Uh, 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 and then you all have, the, I, don't, I don't know, many families that have kept intact a, a musical legacy and continued with it. Some people do it for a little while, then it fades, mm -hmm. you know, because mm -hmm. uh, uh, unfortunately in a lot of families, everybody don't have the interest or right. they themselves don't inherit the gift mm -hmm. of music from generation to generation. Mm -hmm. but, but the Whitfields, listen, man, Y'all, y'all got it. I'm telling you, and and it's a blessing uh, uh, to see what God has done with you, for you, and now through you uh, yes, from from your humble beginnings, and uh, to stand in this place now where you are musically, knowing your legacy, mm -hmm. Tommy, and and then also your your dad, David. 
I mean, it's phenomenal. Yeah. And when we hear you guys, and Larry, I'm telling you, man, sometimes if if you don't if you don't listen close, it's like you you have emulated and uh you have caught of the Whitfield Tommy style of song delivery. And then you put your own, you know, personality with it. I mean, it just blows me away. Sometimes I say, my God, this fusion here of, of two, two brothers, great musical legacy, great musical minds, and to hear the, the, the delivery, the discipline in your music. And I mean, I mean, ain't nothing else to say about that. It is, it's called heaven on earth. That's what it is. Amen. <laughs> you know. I'm it's a honored. blessing. I'm 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 honored and I'm humbled um by those words because I know with uh David and I, my nephew, um just keeping everything afloat concerning the legacy. I mean, after uh after we lost his dad in 2015, I mean, yeah. it was it was really like I don't know how to explain it, but it got it. It seemed it seemed as if the road was getting to a dead end because he had David was such a business mind in driving or keeping this legacy alive from mm -hmm. from the business standpoint. And uh, when he made his transition, you know, I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to handle this because I don't have that, that business mind. But then I remember the things that he used to say, you know, when the Bible talks about training up a child, I realized at that moment that it wasn't just a parent to a child. It mm -hmm. was, it was just, uh, a a mentor to the mentee or mm -hmm. the elder brother to the younger brother training up a child just just he was training me up for this moment from mm -hmm. the business standpoint because i was just always a person that i just I, I did music i don't i don't know nothing about anybody asked me anything about business refer to my brother david <laughs> you asked me about a contract, talk to David. Yeah. But he was training me. He was saying things to me that I had to start paying attention to, not realizing that December 8th of 2015, he would make that transition. So mm -hmm. all of those things that he said to me started coming back. And then from that point, that's when. I started developing the business mind that he had. So now when my nephew has a question, now he has, he has me, not, not just, I mean, he has a business manager, you know, but there are some things that he wants to call his uncle and talk mm -hmm. about. And I'm able to share and impart and give wisdom to. And I thank That's God right. for that. You know, I think I yeah. thank God for that. But it was hard, Bishop. I'm gonna tell you, it was it was oh, yeah. hard when David left the body here, but you know, yeah. but the faithfulness of God is all I could say. Oh yeah. man. Yeah. 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 And, and 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 David, for you, you know, to have such a giant in music with all of this knowledge. And then you're up and coming, you've, you've followed his legacy, the legacy of, of your uncle Thomas Whitfield and, and your dad, you know, uh, what was it like for you, you know, to, to, to try to keep going, you know, your father's now gone and, and you got to keep making music. You got to keep singing. You got to keep directing. You got to, keep pushing forward. Uh, uh, what was that like for you, man? Uh, Bishop, it, it, 
it gets rough sometimes. Uh, it gets rough. Um, but the good news is that I know I'm called to this. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. if you ain't called to this, you'll be, you'll give up quick because, you know, uh, some people are just not loyal like they used to be back in the day when my dad was uh, doing music and my uncle was doing music. You know, you would have your ride or die people. And uh, mm -hmm. sometimes those are very few and in between now. And uh, it's just the spirit that's in me continues to keep me pushing no matter what comes, what goes, who's with me, who's not, um, what people say, what people do. Um, it's just something that's in me that keeps me moving forward. And uh, I just thank God for everything that he's doing and everything that he's going to do. And I thank God for the knowledge uh, that my uh, uncle gave me when I was a little boy. I can remember things that he said to me. I'm like, why are you saying this to me? I ain't thinking about doing none of that. Uh, and then I can remember some things that uh, Bishop Craig, both of them, uh, the Craig brothers told me and uh, different things that uh, Pastor D.K. Craig told me when I was a little boy in the office downstairs at Prayer Tabernacle. And I'm like, and I think about all of that and I'm like, oh, and it all makes sense now. They were dropping yeah. nuggets and planting seeds yeah. in my spirit yeah. to be yeah. who I am today. It's a training of a just, child moment. Yes. <laughs> it's a training yes. of a child moment. Yes. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> it's just, uh, it just amazes me. I'm like, man, so that's what they were saying without really saying. <laughs> like, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, just like what you were saying that, uh, my, my dad had told me, he was like, he said, son, I don't want you to get out there too quick. He said, because you don't know the business. He said, everybody's not uh, saved. You know, right. everybody, you, 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 you're going to have to put down that niceness and you're going to have to really get with some jokers. You know, he didn't say <laughs> jokers. That's right, me saying right. jokers. Right, 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 right. <laughs> right. This is a family show. <laughs> So yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he said you're gonna really have to get with them. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've had some times where I had to get with some people that uh, I admired, and I'm like, you know, you you can't do that. Mm -hmm. I'm not little David, you know. Mm -hmm. So and they be like, you know what? You're right. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you know, to God be the glory. I just thank God for uh, sometimes that spirit that was in my dad, it had come out of me mm -hmm. uh, for business, how to separate, you know, different things, you know, yeah, we're friends over here, but just like my uncle was saying, you know, business is business. Right. And even though I have a, a manager, uh, I still have to step in and let people know, like, no, it's not going like that. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, I just thank God for what he's doing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I want to pause right here and say this to you all while I'm thinking about it, you know, because I don't want to forget, you know, I'm I, I'm not as young as I used to, but I'm young as I want to be right now. <laughs> <laughs> right. I well. admire. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> I admire when I look across the landscape uh, of musical families and uh, on, on all in all genres of music, and mainly in the Christian families, uh, the say just the church, uh, the body of Christ, and uh, I, I've seen some dysfunction in in some Christian families who were in church and uh, uh, and they just didn't get along. But what I admire and always have admired about you guys is the family love, the family unity, even though God has given you your own ministries, there is no fighting, no jealousy, no envy. You all are 100% supportive of each other. And I'm telling you, uh, 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 you don't see that everywhere. Mm -hmm. 
and and I and I want I want to uh, uh, really you know congratulate you guys and applaud you all for keeping the right spirit working with each other stand family uh, even yeah. with business and even with your 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 music careers where you share together but at the same time you're your own person and you have your own musical career and ministry that that's awesome you know yes, and I, I wanted to make that point because uh, I just recently saw some stuff with you know and I can't call no names uh, but you know it's 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 sad that when you have uh, musical families uh, musicians singers all in a family they can't work together mm -hmm. they can't get it's always a continual spat and disagreement over foolishness mm -hmm. when 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 God has called the family uh, to create and to multiply and and with how you all have done in this generation coming after your your, your brother and your uncle and your dad I mean it's phenomenal to me and I want to bless you guys and I pray that you all keep that same humility that same spirit uh, it's going to take you where you got to go, you know, uh, and, and of course, you know, the Bible say, I have not seen nor you heard. Yes, sir. So God has already have, he already has a destiny and purpose prepared and planned for your ministries and, and you're just walking it out. Praise God. Amen. I appreciate y'all you you for that. Amen. I applaud Thank you. I need y'all to jump in the comment section and say, let's applaud the Whitfield family, brother Larry, and Brother David, why y'all in there? Jump on in there and let's bless God for uh, these great minstrels and uh, uh, ministers of music. Amen. Amen. Uh, they jumping in there, sending up thumbs and hearts and all of that. <laughs> you know. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. And uh, uh, we're, humble. We're, we're humble. Ramon Perry from Chicago, they jumping in there. Roosevelt, yes, sir. talking to you, David, you were definitely called to this. Chris Jones is in there, Marla Larkin. Uh, uh, Donnell DeBose, Pastor and, Willis, yeah, Pastor, Pastor John, John Willis, hey. Anthony John. White, Anthony T. White, yes. Julius Sticks from Buffalo, New York. I mean, they're coming in, don't y'all? Because see, if I miss yes. somebody, y'all gonna be mad at me. Uh, Marla Larkin, David, Elder David Tate, uh, Evangelist Esther Smith. Oh, wow, in, 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 wow, in Pastor Gerald Irvin. Irwin, I just interviewed them last week. God bless you, Evangelist you Smith. God bless yes. you bless so you. much. Yes. She's going to be Apostle Joyce Driver. Blessings to you, woman of God. Amen. Oh, they're jumping in. You. Brother David yes. Brock from Ben Harbor. David Brock, God bless you. Yeah. David Brock, hey, man. You know, David, man, he loved the Whitfield side every now and then. He'll inbox me and say, man, I'm at the piano. I'm reminiscing. I'm going back. Awesome musician. Thank you, man, Absolutely. for yes. chiming in. Absolutely. Blessing yes. us tonight. Uh, but listen, guys, uh, uh, I got to ask y'all this question. Mm -hmm. You know, we've been locked up in this pandemic and uh, we've been using more smaller groups, praise teams, and soloists. Uh, is the choir coming back? Is the choir coming yes. back? Yes. I'm going to let you answer that first, David. I'm going to let you answer that first. <laughs> <laughs> Since you got one, I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you take that one. He done already jumped in and say yes. I mean, yes. what can we look forward to uh, as this thing begin to lift? We know eventually it's going to lift, and uh, uh, are we gonna welcome the choirs back? And I think they're getting ready to come back with a vengeance. They're ready to sing. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh... I got some inboxes just the other day from my other church, just a shout out to Gethsemane Baptist Church. Um, they was, they're ready to come back. We're just waiting on uh pastor just to give the okay for the choir to come back. Um, yeah. But yes, choirs is coming back. Um, you know, I love good choir music. Mm -hmm. I'm a yeah. choir boy to the bone. I'm a choir boy to the bone. Yes, I do praise and worship now because that's what we have to do because we can't have everybody, you know, around. Um, yeah. But I'm a choir boy to the bone. And me personally, 
I cannot wait until yeah. I can get all of my choirs together where I can get all of my uh, Whitfield production singers together to do something we have to, um, now we have to be, you know, sporadically and everything that we do can all come together. Uh, but I believe soon and very soon, uh, mm -hmm. everything is gonna work out for our good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and Larry, what do you think about uh, the music is, is, is that, that choir sound, you know, uh, they jokingly talk about some of the praise and worship songs. <laughs> you know, they got this thing going around now saying they seven words and they sing 11 times, 7 right. 11 songs, you know. <laughs> 7 right. 11. I'm a, now, I'm going to say this. I think, um, um, and, and I'm going to say this. I think everything has its proper placing. Yeah. Okay. I think if everything is placed right, everybody can work together because at the end of the day, all of it is put together so that someone at the end of the day has decided that I want to come to Christ. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's from the beginning, from the prayer, however your service is set up, from the beginning, prayer, devotion, Whatever you do, at the end of the day, it's all set up, including the sermon, so that somebody can make a decision to come to the Lord. Yes. So I think all of it is necessary. We are missing that choir element. Yeah. I would say that choir element is like that, that placing before the pastor come up. That has always been like the sermonic type thing where the choir is placed you know um but i think as long as everything comes together everybody is in their proper placing because it can all work i mean praise and worship and choir you know and then the word of the lord and then invitation offering however it's put together i think it's all going to come back right now you can't do that because Everybody got to be social distance. We got to be this. We got to be that. But from a standpoint of just ministry in itself, I think it can all work together. I mean, you hear the, you know, I was raised in the choir. I was this. this. I know we doing praise and worship now, but I came up doing this and stuff. But I think it all can come together. I think it all can mm -hmm. work together because the truth of the matter is this. The praise and worship portion of it, when you think about the praise and worship, when you think about the words you're singing, it is man to God or God is speaking to man from a standpoint of praise and worship. In the choir setting, it's, it's the inspirational, it's the encouragement, it's the getting your heart ready to listen to what's about to be said to you that's going to change your life. So it all it all works works together. We just have to stop that competitive foolishness that right. we do. That it comes off like it can't work that way. We have to yeah. stop that competitive foolishness, and that's what it is. It's competitive foolishness. It can all work together. Yeah, yeah. Well, we, we got a good question, Reverend Donnell DePose. Say, with the music industry pushing more solo based music, how can we create? a footprint, a platform to bring the choir sound back to the forefront. Uh, this is a serious, like, serious like a choir music in mainstream media. With the music oh. industry pushing more solo based music, I think, well, yeah. <laughs> I think sometimes people are pushing that for, uh, Man, do I want to say this? Say it. You? Say it. Do I want to say this? <laughs> yeah, I you want to say it. I think no, seriously though. I think I think some of this stuff has to do with money. Yeah. The less is better because I get more money if I don't have to call in all these people. That's why well, you're yeah. hearing all these tracks and all this other stuff, because if I don't have to pay all these people to do all this stuff, 
Hello, somebody. I'm talking now. Yes, <laughs> I'm talking yes, better than what's coming. I listen. If I don't have to pay all these people to do all this, or if somebody called the Whitfield Music Group and then I come, but I bring a track of the Whitfield Music Group, but it's just me. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? That's that pushing that solo bass. I think people just need, if you got a choir, push your choir. You got to force the issue. You can't yeah. sit back and wait for the industry to do anything. See, that is that is one of the problems that we have. We sit and we wait to see what happens instead of just pushing the agenda that God has given us to do. If God has given you to do it, then just do it. Don't yeah. wait for somebody to say go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that's how you really get the choir back in there. See, yeah. a lot of things are being done because that's what's popular. That's what's popular. But if you just going to do what God is telling you is mandating you to do, then you just got to push it. You got to push it and keep pushing it until yeah. things happen and people recognize, okay, this is where we need to be. Yeah. And that's how things shift. You have to push what God has given you to do. Yeah. Yeah. Because there, there are some choirs, David, David's project it out. Larry with Larry uh, Callahan just released one. Mm -hmm. There's a couple other choirs. Ricky Dillon just did something else. Uh, there's there's several choirs coming out with stuff, and there are going to be more choirs from from Detroit. Uh, I'm looking forward to 2022 that are going to be doing choir projects. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, we're known, you know, as as if we got some solo artists, here, but but we're basically known as a choir city. Right. Yeah. I mean, just just outright. We're known for the choir legacy and the sound and the music, the originality that comes out of Detroit. Mm -hmm. So um, I myself, I mean, working on something that I'm going to have to put the Fellowship of Music and Arts Choir, or Ecumenical Choir together to get out some choir material. Yes, sir. Uh, and uh, and so, uh, Reverend DeBose, I, I, I understand your point, but I think we're going to get there. We're going to get yes. there. We're coming back, and uh, we're going to come back with, with, with fresh, original, anointed new music uh, that's, that's going to be in the right place, right time. And thank God for the new platforms mm -hmm. that we have to get it out. Can you yes. imagine what, what music uh, careers would have been like back in the, the 70s and the 80s, mm -hmm. if we had Spotify and, and CD Baby and, and iTunes and all of this stuff, you know? Right. Uh, and like you said, you, you alluded to earlier, it's all about money. Because yes, I know with our project, getting on Billboard and all that, and uh, sometimes I tell the story how I was approached by a company to do X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. But I said, no, I, I want to keep, you know, artistic control Absolutely. of my music. I don't want y'all to tell me I can't, can't say Jesus and I can't do this. And y'all going to bring in a producer that's going to take my music to a whole nother thing that don't even sound like nothing I wrote. Mm -hmm. So, man, I'm like, y'all ain't got enough money to make me turn my music over to y'all like that. Absolutely. And so... Let so, me add uh, this hope, too. Yeah. Let me add this. Songwriters, songwriters, producers, start writing songs or restart or resume <laughs> writing songs <laughs> that are not so solo based. Yeah. Start writing songs that are choir based, that maybe you put a solo in there to sprinkle at the beginning to give introduction to uh, the choir that is gonna drive the song. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cool. And then allow the soloist to sprinkle ad lib, but the song is driven by the choir. See, a yeah. lot of songs now are written like oohs and ahs, and then the solo takes over and that's it. Yeah. And we got that's to turn good. that thing that's around. Good and start writing songs that are choir driven. Maybe you put a solo at the front and then you sprinkle them around what the choir is doing instead of the choir being sprinkled 
around what the soloist is doing. Right. So right. that's something we have to do. We got to do it. Yeah. That's something we have to do as songwriters. Mm -hmm. And that's how you'll change that, really. Yeah, so start, never start yeah. writing. You got some songs. That's right. Teach them songs to the choir and do another And it's season. not taking away from the soloist. It's not, no. it's not taking away from the soloist. The soloist is going to do what they're going to do, but you just start doing songs that are choir driven and you watch how things turn around. It will I mean, when you when you look around the country and you look at artists like uh, uh, John P. Key, you look at you look at Hezekiah, Dr. Hezekiah Walker, and and some of the mainstream artists, that that's that's what happens. You know mm -hmm. exactly what you said. They got songs. Some songs don't even have solos. Right. They're just quiet songs. Mm -hmm. And you yeah. know Hezekiah Walker was big, big. You know, initially for that. They were all quiet songs. What very few soloists was on a lot of his music initially, and and so we thank you for for that observation, uh, and uh, uh, I hope we answered your question. But 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 now that we we are looking at uh, the opportunity to get back soon, even though we got all this news about this new variant, this Delta variant, and all that numbers are going up and all that. But the day is still going to come. So, like you said, writers start writing, getting mm -hmm. ready. So when when things open up, you can start rehearsing like 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 it's no tomorrow, mm -hmm. and get ready to do your concerts again. I miss that, man. I miss yes. I miss all of the choirs, annual concerts, especially yes. here in Detroit. Sometimes I would travel around the country to go concerts. And let me tell you all this. All you Detroit writers, and 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 uh, listen to me, I'm not gonna tell you wrong. Everywhere I've gone across the length and breadth of this country, when I go to concerts, they invite me to come in. And sometimes I'm not going to be a guest, I'm just going to support. Let me tell y'all something. They always seem to include a Detroit song. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's 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 amazing to me. Yep. I go to Texas, I go to Florida, I go to LA, wherever they are so impressed and so awed about the gospel sound that comes out of Detroit until the majority of them always had a Detroit writer mm -hmm. or a gospel song by a Detroit artist. Mm -hmm. I think that's phenomenal. Yeah, it is. I think it's phenomenal. It is. Yeah, and 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 uh, lately, I've been hearing so much Whitfield music. Uh, I had a young guy called me uh, from I think he's from from uh, the Virginia area, you know, and he was trying to find some of those earlier uh, Whitfield Company projects, you know, because it was some songs he remembered that he wanted to bring back to his choir. Mm -hmm. And uh, my boys in Philadelphia, you know, uh, always doing Detroit music. Yeah. I think, I think that that is a blessing. And so what you said, Larry, to all of these musicians, start writing uh, uh, some good quality choir music. Mm -hmm. And then you got already out. Y'all get to get David's project. Mm -hmm. Go on YouTube. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and please and learn get those it. Songs and teach them. Yes. 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 Phenomenal project. Phenomenal. Yes, sir. Phenomenal project. I was uh very honored to be a part of it. And I know he's my nephew, but people don't understand. I respect the gift that's on his life. I mean, he's my nephew, and I can say he's the greatest, but I just respect the oil. Uh, this on his life because not only is he a choir master um, he has an awesome choir but he's a minister of the word um, uh, yeah so and I just respect the oil that's on his life so when he asked me to write something on this particular project I was honored to give him uh, a song and then to just be a part of it and just to be there you know, it's yeah. kind of like I'm his uncle slash dad. <laughs> you know, I'm right, just proud. Right, right. 
I'm very, I'm just very proud to just see him do what he do. And then he has an awesome uh, 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 help me. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Sweetheart. Also help me. That is a business <laughs> strong business mind. Don't mess with my husband. Uh, <laughs> I'm a kick your teeth in type woman. You know that's awesome. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Bishop Woods don't know nothing about that part of Keisha. You don't know oh that part God. of Bishop. Oh, man, you can see when I've been around y'all. I see her here, there, and everywhere at at, at one of the last concerts y'all had over at Fellowship. You know, she uh -huh. had the cash app, she had the cash machine, she was taking yes. care of, she was yes. taking care of the business, man. I yes. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. You know, yeah. You got your own in-house uh business professional and private bodyguard. Yes. Yes, sir. What a blessing. What a blessing. Yes, sir. Uh, that that is that you have now 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 David man, uh going back a little ways cause. One of the things I know you did, you being modest, you didn't mention that, but I'm gonna mention it because uh, while you were, uh, after coming, being a part of Chris Jones, and then all, all of you were at Wings of Love, right? Right, Chris right. Part of Wings of Love. Man, that choir, Wings of Love choir, you know, and I know Pastor Jackson, don't mind me saying this, you know, became a Detroit household name. Yes. Under your leadership, mm -hmm. under your leadership. Oh program. my God. All of the concerts and sure. programs, I'm telling you that y'all would do uh, uh, is because of your, your humility and your awesome yes. uh, leadership, how you masterfully led that choir. I mean, when I was pastoring and we would fellowship with Wings of Love, man, I said, Lord, I, don't, I need to leave my little choir at home because <laughs> I already know when they get up the sack, it ain't going to be nothing left, you know, to do, but just get a benediction right. and dig up and go home. And they sang a hymn and went out. They went on out. <laughs> so, but I, I remember those, those wonderful days, uh, those wings up when I was coming around more often and all that you were doing there musically, you know, let me know what was it like working with such a a pastor uh, uh, who just really kind of trusted you and gave you full reign to just just form his music choir and shape them for the music ministry of the church. Wow, Bishop, um, I'm definitely humbled and honored uh, just to have a good leader as my pastor. My my pastor does not. Uh, handcuff me mm -hmm. um and i love that about him um even when i'm working with other churches he does not handcuff me he still say uh home comes first make sure that we're good yeah and, <laughs> and um it's just man it's just he just respects my gift and the anointing that's on my life. And he would mm -hmm. tell people, do not come to me if David tells you, he don't call me David. He say, if Dave tell you, uh, if he tell you something, that's it. Don't come to my office because I'm gonna send you right back to him. Mm -hmm. And uh, awesome. I, love, awesome. I love that uh, about him. He does not uh, handcuff me as I said before, when my choir is um, traveling, he do not demand that I, you know, be at service long as, you know, I have to train people to, uh, you know, do the choir and things of that nature. But he does not, you know, he's not a slave master and he doesn't micromanage. And I've come in contact, I'm not going to say no names, uh, of pastors that uh slave masters that's want to micromanage you and they don't even have an inkling of what's going on with the music ministry and uh they can't even sing themselves but they want to be <laughs> in it i probably said too much <laughs> um, you on the line Say it. <laughs> you know you like why are you saying that why are you 
just study. Let me do the ministry. Let me do the music part. And I had to tell, oh Lord, I had to tell, you know, a first lady like, hey, right. stay in right. your lane respectfully. Yeah. You yeah. hired me to do a job. And I'm not talking about my first lady, Debbie Jackson. I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. All right. <laughs> Mm, yes. I, I would say that's what you hired me to do. Something let me popped in my let, head. The first lady just popped in my head. But anyway, you go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> just let me let me do that. You you have no business of calling a musician when you got me to be in the minister of music. Why are you doing that? Mm -hmm. Oh, do you and then she says, oh, do you want him to go home? Yes, send him back home. Here's my musician right here. Mm -hmm. And just when I when I'm at my home church, I don't have to worry about that type mm -hmm. of stuff. Mm -hmm. But when I go to other places, you know, you know, some pastors get a little worried that you're trying to take their church or you're trying to oh uh, I remember I remember one preacher say, Don't shout my church. I'm like what <laughs> I don't want but then the first time it goes crazy Whitfield what's wrong mm -hmm. man you tie my hands mm -hmm. you tie my hands do you want your music ministry to to be good or you want us to be mediocre or you just want us just to be something your trophy when we go out mm -hmm. you know so yeah. Yeah. Uh, I thank God for Pastor Alvin E. Jackson. Uh, he's one of a kind. Um, he said, uh, Whitfield, just do you. Mm -hmm. If you have some problems, call me. Yeah. And that's how it's been for years. And I've been there since I was eight years old. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Uh, there is an issue of, of uh, uh, trust. Um, there's I mean, Pastor Jackson trusts David and he trusts the anointing. Again, it goes back to the oil, you know, that's on his life. He trusts him, but also too, he's been there long enough to gain that, okay, I can take my hands off of this and I can go and do what I'm doing. You know, case in right. point, I, I give an example. Uh, my pastor, shout out to my pastor, Eric Wilkerson up from the World Ministries. Uh, yeah. When I first came to uh, Up From The World Ministries, uh, there was a trust, there was a security that I had to give him because he sat the ministry, he sat the music ministry down for a number of months because he just didn't want to deal with the foolishness that sometimes music ministry brings. You know, the clashing with the pastor, the, the music ministry got one vision and the pastor has another vision. Uh, shout out to Rodney White, because I know he's been working on that for a while. Uh, the the clashing of the pastor mm -hmm. and the music ministry, when there's only one visionary in the house, what you do, you, you grab a hold to what the pastor's vision is that God has right. given him, and then you collaborate the music ministry around that one vision. And that's how you gain trust. You know, David has gained trust with Pastor Alvin Jackson and Wings of Love. And I just admonish the other ministries that you call. See, first of all, if you're going to call David, and I'm using him for an example. If you're going to call David over to your church, you have to first realize his track record. What is his track record? And if he has a good track record, then you have to say, okay, I trust him enough is to handle this music ministry in a way that I can be comfortable, that I can take my hands off of it. Sometimes, Bishop, and you can kind of touch on this, uh, sometimes pastors uh, don't know how to take their hands off. They got to have their hands and everything, and they don't know how. They really don't know. They really don't know. They really don't know how to just take their hands off because they they're they're workers 
They got their hands here. They got their hands here. They're preaching. They're doing this. They're doing that. And they don't know how to trust someone of integrity and character and track record to say, okay, he's going to do this music ministry the way I need it to be so that we can really take off as a ministry. Yeah. So those are some of the issues that you deal with. You know, yeah. somebody I, said in the, uh, somebody said in, in here, uh, Roosevelt said, it's a rarity that pastors give full leadership authority to their minister of music. Right, right. Yes, point. Oh. yes. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm in an agreement having been born and raised as a as a PK, so to speak, my grandfather under his tutelage and then under a great master like Charles Nixon and my my uh, exposure from all of the musical influences and mentors I had over my life. I, I agree. It's about 10 percent. Uh, Larry of those pastors who are like that but then I've been around long enough to see that other percentage of pastors who got problems they want good music department like David was alluded to and then they don't want good music department mm -hmm. so right. they got to make up what they want and I say that because I've seen it happen that's one reason why after uh, 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 leaving uh, out of St. James and such a dream team. I'm glad I would always work with pastors who were not insecure. Mm -hmm. You know, because if you got a strong minister of music with the oil on them and you dealing with this is a conversation we're going to have to come back and have extensively with yeah. some other help. When yeah. you're dealing with an anointed minstrel mm -hmm. And you're dealing with a pastor who don't even know what the all is. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's very so learned. He's a good or orator. Mm -hmm. He's a good, I mean, he's educated and he's got charisma. But, he, but spiritually, mm -hmm. there, there is an imbalance. And, and that's why a lot of pastors who understand, they look for uh, uh, anointed minstrels purposely that can also help them. But, but when you bring them in to help you, don't kill them, or, like you said, tie their hands. Right. Because they're there to help you. Right. You know, yeah. and some of these pastors, you know, the new thing they're doing now, when I grew up coming up in church, when they licensed or ordained the preacher, they not only vested them, but they gave them a Bible and a hymn book. Mm hmm you know, so every pastor ought to have some kind of musical insight and knowledge mm -hmm. or get what a ministry music they can trust. But some of these pastors, Larry, I'm going to tell you, because I still get calls from musicians and then some pastors. I said, I'm going to start the Nicodemus ministry because they're calling me by night, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and, and a lot of their problem is they create their own problem. Mm -hmm. If you got, like David said, if you got a man or a young woman, a woman of God who know their music and they're adding to your music ministry, mm -hmm. let them do their work. Let them do their job yeah. and, yeah. And, and it can flow. Mm -hmm. But some of these pastors, they don't want you still in their thunder. Mm -hmm. No. Because in, the, in, in some traditional churches, you know, the pastor don't come out to time for them to preach. Absolutely. And here they come out the office. But I've been in some churches now. They start coming out early because the choir started singing. And, and they don't want nobody. Some of these pastors don't want nobody to shout off nothing but what they say. That's correct. And that's crazy. I said, they have not read Chronicles where right. the choir was so anointed that even uh, 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 the priest could not minister Mm -hmm. Because of the glory cloud of God mm -hmm. that came in mm -hmm. while the singing, if that choir is right on Sunday, mm -hmm. oh man. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. I remember, yes, sir. I remember, yeah. In many instances, the word, the word can be given in a song. Yes, sir. The yes. word can be given in a song. But, you know, I, now I'm going to say this. 
only because of the fact that I work with other music ministries and stuff. Also, too, um, it is as it is as simple as a conversation that goes beyond the pay scale. Yeah. Okay. It, yeah. It, okay. You need a musician. Okay. How much you paying? Okay. We rehearse on Thursday and we do one service and once a month we go out. That's the conversation. Nothing else about uh, how do you feel about this? How do you feel about that? No camaraderie or you giving that potential minister of music your what you want or what you want to have and there is an understanding there is a mutual understanding because i can talk to a pastor and if he talking crazy like that and i'm gonna just call it that if he talking crazy like that i don't want y'all doing no thunder i don't want y'all doing no lightning i want this you know that money that you about to give me is not worth it thank you yeah i'm out yeah. See, money, see, money can't be so so uh hungered after that you will accept something like that. Because this thing is about God, man. If it's about yeah. God, if it's not about God, you're a sounding brass and a tinkling symbol. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what you are. So as musicians, mm -hmm. we really shouldn't even be accepting foolishness like that. That's what it is. Yeah. It's buffoonery. Yeah, <laughs> it is my prayer. This yeah. thing got to be about my ministry. prayer all the time when I would do kingdom. workshops. Yeah, 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 and and we're gonna do some other panel discussions because my prayer has always been when I talk to pastors on the down low. See, they don't want they don't want you to know that you get counsel behind the scenes. But I tell the pastors all the time. I said. It's, it's, it's just as much uh, song in the Bible. Uh, they talk about songs, songwriters, the David, Asap. You're talking about all of the music and praise the Lord and the songs that's mentioned in the Bible, you know, as well as the word. I know we got the word is paramount. We need the word. Our faith is increased by the word. But at the same time, the worship of God, I mean, the praises mm -hmm. that, that are taught in the word of God, you know, uh, 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 and, and I tell people all the time, all these Bible scholars, the last five to six psalms start and end with praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. I think it's from Psalms 45 all the way to Psalms 150. They start and end yeah. with praise the Lord. And some of these same churches got nerve enough to, to read the hundred psalms. When they open their service, y'all don't mean none of that. Into his gates right. with thanksgiving. And right. in this course with praise. Right. You no, know, they don't mean none of that. So, well, but we'll talk about that another time because we're going to have to talk about it. But but listen, man, I appreciate you all uh, uh, taking this time. We don't spend a good 90 minutes. And um, we still didn't, didn't, didn't really get all where we wanted to go. We're going to have to do it again. But, um, uh, I want both of you to take a minute before we go and, and David, uh, give us some good sound counsel to these directors and, and uh, those who got community choirs and those that are connected with churches. See, we're also what I love about you all, you know, y'all, you all were the kind of guys that been church hopping and running all over everywhere can't stay nowhere, no time, don't build nothing nowhere. Thank God for your, your stability in ministry and how you have built and have helped churches uh, to build their music ministries. Give, if you had to give like a mentee some counsel today, share a few words with some, some of our uh, brothers and sisters tonight. I would say... Uh... First, you want to make sure that you're called to do it mm -hmm. um, because it's, it's a lot to deal with us. Um, 
You want to make sure that you <laughs> pray for that fire to keep going on, that you don't get um, stale in your teaching. Uh, make your uh, rehearsal, uh, make it motivating, make it exciting. Uh, as the young people would say, you know, don't make it lame. You know, do something fresh. Mm -hmm. uh, continue to strive for excellence. Keep on pushing. Keep on uh, moving forward. And make sure that you have the heartbeat of the pastor. Yes. You want to make sure that you have the heartbeat of the pastor. And know his uh, vision. Mm -hmm. Then that way you all can meet at the same. Ask him what he wants. Mm -hmm. Ask him uh, what... Uh, you know, Pastor, what you're preaching today. Mm -hmm. So your songs can go with uh, uh, the sermon. And then uh, lay before the Lord. Ask the Lord, you know, what, what do the people need to hear mm -hmm. this month? And you can't, you know, you got to spend time with the Lord. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's what I would tell the new people, new young people, uh, that's new minister music, or uh, that's young like myself, <laughs> to continue to, you know, lay before the Lord. See what's, you know, see what the Lord wants you to do uh, in the music. And then talk to the pastor. Say, hey, what you want, what you want the music ministry to do this year? That needs to have a conversation. Never you you'll never be buddies with the pastor. Uh, right. I, I wouldn't want to be the buddies with the pastor because then you're too comfortable. Right. Um, and there's no respect. So you know you don't have to be boys or nothing like that. But just see what his vision is. See where where he wants the choir to go. He may not want a lot of fast type of music. He may want you to sing something slow so he can set his own temperature. So, you know, see what the pastor wants. And once you do that, you shouldn't have any problems. Mm -hmm. uh, Brother Larry. Yes, I, uh, my nephew pretty much said it all. Um, I think also too, uh, what's important and someone has said this in the uh notes here that the pastor is the head worship leader um so you definitely have to tap into uh the vision for that house because visions are different uh what a vision might be at bishop wood's house is not the same as pastor jackson's house which is not the same at another pastor's house and so on. So you have to tap into that vision according to the community or the area that God has given him. Uh -huh. His woods might be over here where we're doing this ministry, but we're feeding folk. We're over here doing this. We're laying hands on folks. We over here doing this. Everybody's vision is different. So you definitely have to tap in. You can't carry what you did over at this church over to this church. It may need to adjust a little bit. So that conversation with that pastor is important over and above how much you're asking for. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, the other thing I want to say is uh, to the young people is that we have fathers here in the city we're we're actually on a father's show and when i say father i'm talking about a man of wisdom a man yes. of experience a man of great history a man that can tell you something to help you along the way in this walk with the lord bishop andre sonny woods is a father he is a living legend uh in the city of detroit as long uh, as well as some other people like Pastor Rudolph Stanfield and some other people, uh, we need to listen to our fathers. We cannot go in this ministry by ourselves thinking that we have it all together. 
And yes. I'm saying that because we've had we've had different summits that we've tried to put together that over a period of time, they kind of fizzled because nobody wanted to hear the fathers. So I got to bring that back up because I'm being called uncle. I know, right? I'm being called <laughs> uncle. So many people call me uncle, but they call me that because they listen to me. They hear me. They hear me. So when I say something or suggest something or impart something or give wisdom to, they listen to me and they act on it. Young musicians, songwriters, producers, listen, man, y'all got fathers in the city, but you got to listen to them. You got to, first of all, study your history, understand Detroit has a rich legacy when it comes to music, when it comes to decorum, when it comes to uniform. I mean, when it comes to all of that, we got a rich history and you got to really understand it and study it in order for you to move in the things of God. Don't forget all the stuff that happened back then. There is some of that stuff you could take with you. Now, to be honest, was everything right? No. There was some wrong back there, but you know what? There was a whole lot of right that we could take with us so that when we create our, then our children that are ahead of us can look back and say, okay, now we got some foundation because we took the foundation that was back there. So listen to your fathers. Bishop Woods, I commend you on this entire platform that you've been doing, sir. I commend yes. you. I honor yes, you. you. I thank God for you. I wish you God's best and long life because we need you here. We need what you are doing. We need what you are saying in this platform. And there are other people like yourselves that, again, we need to come back and do this platform. And when we do it this time, we need to listen because I remember the platform that he, he put together. I can't remember the church. I think it was, was it Mount Zion on the east side? Is that Mount Zion? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. we had fathers there, man. We had his, we had Bishop Van. We, oh, not even to get into that, but we need to listen. Yeah. We need to get our history. We need to understand our history in order for us to go forward in the things that God have us to do. We can't go naked. We got to be covered with something. We got to be covered with some wisdom, with some understanding, with some history. Understand who Thomas Whitfield is. Understand who Reverend Charles Nix was from a choir standpoint. Understand who the Voices of Tabernacle was. A lot of these young people don't even know. That's why I thank God for young musicians like Chris Jones. Chris Jones, you sit and talk to that young man. He know his history. He knows his history. So I would just say, again, Study to show yourself approved. Um, in the Bible, it talks about a lot of scriptures start off with behold. Behold mean look, listen, take, take a hold to what's about to be said. Understand your history, y'all. Understand your history, and you can go much further in where. God wants to take you, but you got to understand your history and you got to listen to these fathers in the city, y'all. We got fathers here. I'm an uncle. <laughs> I'm an uncle now. So I've, I've been promoted to uncle, but oh, this man oh. here is still my father. This man here is still, still my father. And he's a great father. He got so much to say and so much more to say. And as long as we have an ear to hear have an ear to hear is so much further we can go. Not only as musicians, but it's so much further along the city can go. And yes, these choirs are coming back. Yes, these churches are going to open again. You know, it may not be the same that it was, but it's going to happen because the Bible talks about it's necessary for us to fellowship. Yeah. So. Yeah. Oh man, that's 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 awesome. I appreciate. Uh, both of you all, your words of wisdom. I pray that Thank the musicians listening will not only 
hear, but be a doer. You know, it's one thing to be a hearer, another thing to be a doer of the word. You touched on something in the Bible. Uh, I'll never forget the late uh, Bishop Otis Floyd, New Jerusalem, Flint, Michigan. He told me years ago, son, if you study the show, and if you don't study the show, <laughs> so either way, yeah. something's going to show up. Something's going to show up. That's study. good. Yeah. Uh, oh, my God. Y'all never guess who's in the comment section now. The, oh. the national president of the National Gospel Choirs and Courses, Dr. Mary Beth Gentry herself. Oh, wow. It's wow. Blessing. blessing from the Dorsey Convention. Bless you, woman of God. God bless you. Time bless you. And, and catching and sharing with us tonight. I mean, she is a jewel if there ever was one, we thank God for her and her ministry. Amen. Well, listen, brothers, I tell you, you all have blessed us tonight, and I appreciate you all taking the time to share your, your wisdom and your journey with us. And I'm, I'm praying those of you that might have missed any of this, it'll be back, and you can just look at it at your leisure. It'll be on our YouTube channel. And listen, what I want you to do, it don't cost you nothing. If you're not an affiliate of the Fellowship of Music and Arts, go to our Facebook page. Let us know you want to be a member and join. Come on and be with us. And then go to our YouTube channel and subscribe. Yes. One day we'll probably be interviewing you. I'm, I'm trying to get all of our Detroit folk in. I got some other people national. Uh, uh, you're going to be surprised at the lineup that's coming next month. You'll hear about that. Uh, starting next week. We got a great lineup for the month of October on This Is My Story, as well as uh, Fellowship of Music and Arts. And again, Larry, tell us about your program and the time that you're on. Yes, sir. Every Sunday, every Sunday at five, you can go to YouTube, uh, Twitch, Twitter, TV, pull up Vent, Radio, V-E-N-T, radio for Sunday throwbacks. I come on every Sunday at 5 p.m. I'll be on this Sunday, and we play good throwback music. Uh, we also have guests, uh, recording artists with uh, new releases. We also have business people to come on. As a matter of fact, I had a young lady on, and all of my shows are on YouTube. You can go to YouTube and pull up Vent Radio. I had a young lady on talking about the foreign currency and the Bitcoin. I had mm -hmm. her on last week. So you want to go back and watch that show, but I'm on every Sunday. It's called Sunday Throwbacks with Larry Whitfield and my co-host, Louis Boyd III. So please uh, subscribe, uh, comment, call in. Um, we love to have you. So I look forward to hearing from you on this week. God bless. Thank you. Bless you, bless you. And David, remind us again, uh, not only your latest release, but what's coming up in November. That's right, Bishop Woods. November the 21st, November the 21st, you want to save your date, save that date. November 21st, uh, we're going to have Sunday Night Live, The Reunion. Sunday Night Live, The Reunion. I'm going to have all of my babies come back. That's ever been a part of Whitfield Productions uh, in these last 21 years. And it's been a lot of them. And uh, we're gonna all come together and do our uh, reunion concert on November the 21st. Uh, the location will be announced. Uh, we'll please stay tuned and we'll let you know real, real soon. You can feel free to hit us up on Minister David Whitfield and Whitfield Productions on Facebook, uh, on Twitter. Uh, you can hit us up that way and you can look up all of our music on all digital outlets. All right, all right. Well, we appreciate y'all. I'm gonna pray for you and uh, thank all thank of you that came in the comment section. I didn't get to get to everybody and but you know we love you, we appreciate you, and uh, continue to support and pray for us as we continue this platform. I want to. I just want to share a word of prayer uh, for you, uh, Larry and, and David. Uh, I'm just believing God along with you all 
that the latter is going to be greater than the former. Amen. Tell people all the time, you can't erase history. But uh, yes. after reading history and learning from history, it's now time to continue to make history. So yes. I'm praying yes. that God will anoint you all afresh. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you. we thank you for Brother Larry Whitfield, Brother thank David you. Whitfield. We thank you for the anointing and the call that's thank upon you. their life. And we ask you now, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you shall provide whatever they shall need yes. in the days to come to continue a vibrant, fervent ministry in the area of music, God. We pray that you will inspire them the more for the arrangements, for the original music, that you will give them melodies from heaven, yes. that you will call them, God, to write and become scribes in music, God. Uh, bless their music ministry and all those that are connected to them. And we pray, God, that their future uh, in music ministry, you will go before them and make easy and successful their way. And we pray the prayer of Psalms 90 and 17. And Lord, let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon them and establish the work of thy hands. Yea, the work of thy hands, establish thou it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now we pray, God, that everything they do will be for your glory, that the saints will be edified and you will be glorified. And whatever they shall need, physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, financially, God, supply their need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. This will servant's prayer tonight in Jesus' name. Amen and thank Amen. God. Amen. All right, God. We look Can I do this back. real, real, real quick? Yes, sir. Can I do this real quick? Father, in Jesus' name, I just thank you for Bishop Woods, God. I thank you for uh, his life, his health, and uh, his strength, oh God. I thank you for the platform that you've given him, oh God, uh, to serve your purpose um, 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 in this season, oh God. The people that uh, he has, uh, the people that are working with him, and uh, I just thank you for just new ideas, new creativity, oh God. I thank you for the help that you're giving him, oh God, to help the people to understand the importance of music ministry, oh God. I thank you for the fellowship, oh God. I thank you that everything that he put his hands on is yes. blessed, oh God. I thank you for him right now, oh God. I thank you for him being a father in this era of uh, music ministry, oh God. And I yes. thank you that today and again, his ladder will be greater Hallelujah. than his past, oh God. I thank you for his life, God. I thank you for what you're doing in his life, oh God. Bless his home, oh God. Bless everything that uh, is about him, oh God. In Jesus' name, we thank you and we honor you and we give you victory for him right yes, now. God. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. I thank amen. you, man. Appreciate that. Thank you, Jesus. It's, it's, it's so refreshing and such a blessing. Listen, friends, if you missed any part of it, it'll be up. And uh, join us next week. We'll be back with a new lineup for the month of October. Until then, Bishop Andre Wood saying, I command the blessings of the Lord to overtake you. That is my prayer. Thank you, guys. Love you. Thank Love you, you, Bishop. Love you too, sir. God bless you. Thank you. Love you, David. Love you too.